Ladies and gentlemen, friends, it's a huge pleasure to be here. Can I congratulate Harris uh, and um, Patchwork for putting on this event? Uh, obviously, it's very popular because there is standing room only. And I'm so pleased to see so many people here uh, now that Parliament has come back. Uh, I have a very simple story to tell you about, um, which is that I never intended to go into politics. My parents wanted me to be a doctor or a doctor. Uh, which is why I became a lawyer, uh, as did my sisters. I was a huge disappointment to my parents because they really wanted me to do GCSEs and A-levels in physics, chemistry and biology. For some reason, the Asian community's attachment to the medical profession, I've never quite understood it, because I think we've got enough Asian doctors, was, was paramount. And they were really disappointed uh, when I didn't make it uh, in the sciences. I only decided to stand, frankly, and I'll be honest, because I think there was nothing else that I could do. Uh, so I decided to go into politics. Uh, and I remember my first meeting. I was doing politics at um, A-level. And I turned up to a meeting of the Labour Party in Richmond and Barnes. Those of you who know South London. Is there anyone here from Richmond? There is somebody. The only other black person, I think, in Richmond apart from me. Uh, and I turned up, and there was only about three people there, and I was immediately elected secretary of the Labour Party um, because I was the only other uh, person interested in Labour politics and was then sent as the delegate to the Labour Party conference. And two years later, I was the candidate for Parliament. But I have to say, I've very much enjoyed the last 26 years that I've spent in Parliament. It's been a roller coaster ride. But I would definitely recommend politics and being an MP as a career for the future. It's hard work. The pay is very low, by the way, no matter what people tell you. Uh, uh, but you do get to go to exciting meetings of this kind and inspire other people to join you. But as Mark has just said, um, being an MP is not the only thing that one can do in political life. I think it's really important that we understand that the whole of society only changes, not just because you have people elected to this place or appointed to the House of Lords, but also because you have representatives of the community in different professions and in different, um, uh, and in different organizations. And Mark was reflecting on the fact that we do have more black and Asian civil servants that, than at any other time in, in our history. That's absolutely right. But actually, if you look at the highest levels of the civil service, there isn't a single black or Asian permanent secretary. And frankly, if you look at the current cabinet, apart from Saeed Awasi, who was appointed to the House of Lords and appointed by David Cameron as a Minister of State and Foreign Office, there isn't a single black or Asian person sitting in the cabinet. And I think we should be, frankly, very sorry about that in 21st century Britain. I think that my party, I'll be partisan for a moment, uh, has done much better. And I know that when Labour is elected in a couple of years' time, that we will have at least two black and Asian people sitting in the cabinet. Sadiq Khan, who's one of them, who I know has spoken to earlier and may well return, and Shabana Mahmood, who is uh, a shadow minister for education and will almost certainly be in the, the cabinet at some stage in the next uh, government. What's interesting is looking at their history. One, the, the son of a bus driver who went into politics via the law. The other also went into, uh, into the law, but she did spectacularly well at Oxford, where she studied law, became a barrister. So different routes for getting to where they are today. So I'm not telling you that I think the glass ceiling has been broken, because it hasn't been broken, but it has actually been dented. And I think that that's a very, very important start. But looking around the room, uh, I see people who have a huge potential for going into politics and generally into public life. I recently did the interviews for um, the European uh, candidates for the West Midlands. And incredibly, only one uh, Asian woman and only one black woman applied to be a European Labour candidate in the West Midlands. I was actually shocked at these figures that in this day and age, with organizations of this kind, with other people, 26 black and Asian members of parliament, only two 
women applied to go to the European Parliament. And I felt that either we were not getting the message across or maybe that people felt that this was not the right time. Now, people will always tell you that it is not the right time to apply. But my philosophy on life is if there is something going, stand for it, even if you're going to lose. And if there's an opportunity that's offered to you, take it, whatever that opportunity is. Don't stand back and think, oh, what is the salary going to be? How long am I going to stay in this job? What am I going to achieve? Go for it. Ch take up the challenge. Because actually you don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know what that opportunity is going to, to take you, where that opportunity is going to take you. Unless you apply and you go forward and you use the talents and abilities that you have. Because I think we're a hugely talented community. But actually we lack that self-confidence of being able to stand up and say, I want to do this um, job and I want to plan for the future. We're always thinking very, very short term and I think that's a big mistake. And I encourage anyone that I see to make sure that they take up those opportunities and they feel fulfilled. And in the next six months, in the next year, an opportunity is going to come to you, um, which you will think, oh, shall I? Shall I do this or not? And my message to you is that you should definitely do it. You should definitely seize the opportunity to make sure that uh, you have uh, uh, an opportunity to take up that challenge and move forward in the future. Because if you don't, absolutely nobody is going to ask you to take up that challenge. Actually, I'm very interested because I've, I've become addicted because my daughter's 15, Angeli. She keeps getting me to watch um, uh, The Voice. <laughs> and she keeps getting me to watch um, Britain's Got Talent. And I keep looking for the BAME uh, candidates for Britain's Got Talent and The Voice. And try to reach for the phone to vote for them. Um, I, I watched the Eurovision Song Contest. I don't know whether you did. Yeah, did. But I was amazed. Europe with so many, so many black and Asian people. I think I didn't see a single BAME act coming from one of the European countries. Did you? So you watched it as well. He's admitted to watching the Eurovision Song Contest. And I think that that's really bad. Uh, because I think that there is huge talent out there uh, and we should maybe be represented in that way. Let me say this finally. Everyone goes on about the achievements of um, Barack Obama and of course that is uh, one of the huge achievements that I have seen in my last 26 years in Parliament. I never thought we would see a black man elected President of the United States. But actually, having one black president of the United States for eight years is not enough. We need to do so much more in the organizations that we're a part of. So many um, chances that we've got to change things. Um, so we have to seize those chances and make sure that there is a difference. Not all of you will end up wanting to be an MP. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of it. In fact, I'd be absolutely astonished if in 20 years' time, when I hope I'm still here, all of you suddenly end up getting elected to Parliament. But the crucial thing is to make sure that in these other places where you can have influence, whether it's the civil service, it's the banking industry, whatever, go for it. Challenge. Unless you do it, absolutely nobody is going to give you that opportunity. Thank you very much for listening.